Hello, it's Adam Watson again. Welcome back to part two about clickers. Uh, we had a part one video that showed uh, what it was like in a classroom-like environment. We demoed using the uh, iPad, scanning the card uh, for responses, how the data would look in the lab view function. This part two video is looking at clickers basically from just the website only, uh, seeing a behind the scenes dashboard look at clickers. So the first tab I want to mention here is the library tab, and this is me logged in, so we've already skipped that step. Um, in library, you can see a few things. Basically, you can see all the series of questions that you've created. Uh, unfortunately, Plickers doesn't quite have a thing where you can say quiz number one and then stack five questions underneath it. Um, you can have as many questions as you want, as far as I can tell on the website, uh, but they're literally going to be listed question by question by question. So. You have to be a little bit, a little bit more patient with uh, organizing and creating quizzes that way in terms of asking multiple questions at a sitting. But that said, uh, you'll see all the different questions. You also see you a filtering by class if you had multiple classes in your account. From this, visually, you can tell a couple things really quick. First off, here's the question. Here's the answers, or in some cases, at least part of the answer. Um, it'll indicate what answer is supposed to be correct for what you put in when you created the question. And last but not least, as far as an icon, it shows here that these two have been assigned to what I call my demo class. Um, however, I haven't used them yet as far as getting responses. This question, however, is one that does have a set of data responses in it. That's the one that we did for the demo a moment ago. So these would be, of course, if you had multiple classes, say period one, period two, and so on, you could easily assign the same question to, say, a few different periods. And if you did that, you would see multiple icon uh, colors here, the multiple dot colors. Uh, as you got responses from those different classes, different periods or whatever, you would see that same indication going on here. So that is the library function. Reports is something else. Uh, reports allows you to see the finished responses. Uh, how did the students in a particular class uh, respond. Again, it lets us know what class we're talking about and the date. Um, this is a quick or overview that lets you know the questions, the answers, and green highlighting what was the correct answer for this particular question, how many students responded that way. However, if you click on it, and this may take a moment, here we go, you can see more information. First off, you can see not only the date, but exactly what time you did it. So you can quickly, in case you're lost in among the different classes, oh yes, this is the one uh, and during fifth period or whatnot, uh, how much out of the class uh, total responses got it correct. Um, you can see here the best function, which is uh, by scrolling, I can see all the students in my class and I can see exactly how they answered. It even helps me by highlighting red for the ones that were incorrect and green for any, like this one, that was correct. So there is our system there. Uh, so it has the name, it has the number that is their Plicker card. And keep in mind that it alphabetizes by the first word of the first name, I should say. So keep that in mind. One thing that at this moment Plickers doesn't have is a way to export out these reports. What you're seeing is, is the data uh, that you can look at. However, one thing that I've noticed is that if you take this information here and simply highlight it out, and then copy and paste it. You can copy and paste that information in, say, a Word document. So there is a, a way to export it out. Unfortunately, right now, there isn't a way to do it in a nice, neat, say, Excel spreadsheet or something. But if that's one of the few knocks against uh, Plickers, then I'll leave it. At, that's one of the few criticisms I probably have as far as the program, especially for free. Clicking over another tab, we can see our classes. Right now, we only have the one demo class. We can edit, archive, or delete that class. And of course, we can add a new class here. If we click open the class, we can see all the different uh, people in the class, all the different assigned names of students to each of these particular clicker cards. And if we needed to edit to change a name or even delete a student, we could easily do that by clicking on that little down arrow. Um, I highlighted this in the original videotape demo, but let me also repeat this again. The great thing about Plickers is, is that you really only have to make one set of cards. Uh, the standard set that you can print and download from the internet is 40, which would, I'd say, constitute 99.9% .9 of any class size. 
the great thing is, is that because the way you set them up in the system, uh, those class, that one set of printed cards of number one through 40, as long as you tell clickers before you do your reading that, uh, okay, I'm in period three, I'm about to ask question number five, uh, it'll know that card number three goes to John Smith, but of course in period seven, uh, card number three might go to Jane Doe. So um, by arranging the rosters, as we see here, it allows us to keep that track and make multiple uh, different uh, class on one set of cards, different classes on one set of cards. Um, last but not least is the live view, and we saw this uh, a moment ago. Uh, keep in mind, the great thing about this is, is that, and I wondered about this myself, well, I could verbally ask questions to the students, but that would be a little bit difficult, I would think, for them to maybe sometimes process. But if you go into live view, the question that you have pushed out through the app is the exact one that's controlled here. In fact, it's the app that allows you to steer and switch to different questions you've assigned to a certain class. Um, you cannot do that through the web. It's through the app of the, of the iPad or the phone. Uh, if you switch questions, then this uh, will update in real time. It may have a delay of a second or two at most, but it um, works pretty quick on either the phone or the iPad when I demoed it out. Uh, again, in live view, the last question that was highlighted or pushed out is the one it's going to show. And because I haven't cleared those answers or switched questions, you'll notice that from the students tab view, it has little check marks to show all the different students that have answered. Great, easy way for me to determine, oh, I thought I scanned 13 Hal Jordan, but I didn't. So I need to go back to his desk and that student and, and make sure to grab that card real quick while they scan. Um, if I click show answers, it'll show, it'll go from a check mark to actually how they answered. And again, by default, uh, Plickers is, is not showing that for obvious reasons. I'll also keep in mind that I can arrange this by name or by number. So this is number, click it it will go to um, uh, the first names as far as alphabetizing that. And, okay, so that's the names, and that's the number system, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. All right, last but not least, okay, in the graph function, and again, this is a real-time app that makes it really powerful. You can quickly, with the graph, see as an informative assessment, okay, are the students getting it or not? Uh, and adjust your lesson accordingly. But right now it's just showing total responses and uh, total number of responses per answer. After the question's been completely done and you're definitely you know, ready to move on or ready to talk about the question that you just asked, you could hit the show correct and it'll let the whole class know, ah, the correct answer was C, highlighting that in green so it's real easy and visual for students to get that. Um, that is pretty much as far as the clickers behind the scene. Uh, I really like this, um, not least of which because if you have literally one device, uh, a phone or one iPad, you could in theory uh, do these formative assessments and um, have a different way of students responding, but most importantly have a, a great way of creating data that you can collect and analyze. That's all I have for now for clickers. Thank you so much for listening.